When I first saw the Boltor Prime, I remember thinking, oh my god, that must be a great weapon. I mean, look at it, it looks insane. And you know what, for its time, it was a great weapon, but it's now 2023 and the Boltor Prime is quite old. Can it still pack a punch? Is it still worth using or is it just mastery fodder? How about we find out together? As always, my name is Lazar and I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, affordable, something that a more casual Tenno can get into. But fear not, my friends, we also got the endgame setup. Prime mods, galvanized mods, take this one to steal path, talk about Warframe buffs and synergies. Essentially, the works. That said though, please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly tone. Simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Boltor Prime. Let's begin by having a quick look at how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Boltor Prime is an absolutely beautiful projectile based primary weapon which fires... Well, it fires bolts. Hence the name Boltor. It's not the only one in its family. We got a total of three Boltors and this is gonna be the flat damage status weapon. Speaking of which, we said it's a projectile based attack. That means leading your targets is definitely a thing with the Boltor Prime. Now normally this is not a big issue because the projectile by default is pretty quick so you should have no problem in getting your headshots. But this begs the question. Since this is not a critical weapon per se, or not a dedicated critical weapon, should you still go for a headshot and the answer is 100% yes. You still get bonus damage and if you don't know what I mean, I got a nifty critical chance and critical damage guide plus all the multipliers involved in the cards right now. For the time being, the accuracy of the weapon is pretty good by default. As you can see, the recoil on this one doesn't go up and down like most weapons in Warframe. This one jiggles from side to side. Take a look at that. But most of the bolts will be landing in the center. As for the model of the bolts, you can take a look at it like so. They disappear really quickly. It seems to be the same model as on the Ack Bolto secondary, only those are like larger and all whatnot. Magazine size is 60 and the reload for a 60 magazine is not terrible. But let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is 60 out of 60, but as soon as you finish building your Boltor Prime, it's gonna have 30 out of 30. So you jump into actions and you double the mod capacity with a Auto King Catalyst. I love playing with this weapon and I hope you will too, because you're gonna have to plug in a couple of Forma, my friends. Now normally I say go V on everything, or that's what we normally do. On this one, you gotta hold off on the Vs, add a couple of dashes, all right? You're looking at three to four Forma maximum. As for the XL slot, you don't need to separately unlock this one. You can leave it locked but you can make use of a terminal velocity if your budget allows you to. 60% projectile flight speed will mean in the case of the bolt or prime that it's easier to aim with, you're gonna be getting the bolts on your targets more reliably quicker. It simply means that the weapon is more easier to handle because as you can see there is no drop off whatsoever which is absolutely fantastic. Accuracy at 50, again it is a accurate weapon as long as you can aim properly and you understand the projectile travel path and travel speed. Ammo maximum is gonna be 540, which is pretty good. Ammo pickup is 80, fire rate is 10, magazine of 60, noise alarming and a 2.4 seconds reload, which again, decent, slightly long for a 60 uh, magazine capacity. Riven dispo, four out of five, which means Rivens are gonna be powerful for this weapon. Priority, we're gonna talk later. But for the time being, know that Bolto Rivens are not very expensive and they're definitely worth picking up for the Prime and for the Telos, more on that later. Trigger automatic, the damage is gonna be critical chance 12%, which is very low, unfortunately, as a base. It is not something I like to call usable, but from a mathematical perspective, it is still not a terrible idea to go with point strike or critical delay. Critical delay will get you to 36%. For the purposes of this review, we'll leave crit alone because let's be honest, mostly all of the weapons in Warframe, the very large majority that is, are gonna be using crit and hunter munitions. We're not gonna be doing that today. Status chance sky high, 34%, not bad, not bad. Then on the other hand, these are bolts, so it could have been just a tad higher. Critical multiplier, did I jump this one? It's a standard 2.0x. The damage, 46 per bolt, and 90% of that damage is gonna be puncture damage, which deals extra to heavily armored targets. So it's not a bad damage type to have. And now that we know all this, we can talk about a standard build. 
Going full blast elemental on this one, we got damage serration, multi shot with split chamber and vigilante armaments. We're gonna have 290 mods. We almost never get to use these mods nowadays. Infected Clip, Stormbringer, these two together will be forming Corrosive because we know we're going to be shooting Ferrite Armor. Also, if you head down to Deimos, Corrosive is still MVP because enemies there are immune to viral damage. But we didn't stop there. No, no, my friends, we also added two 60-60 Corrosive damage with Malignant Force and High Voltage. Malignant Force easily farmed from Corrupted Vore in the Void. As for High Voltage, while it may be... Farm from the game, the mission Na Elgar, Planet Eris, find all the free secret caches, then on extraction you got a 5% chance at this one and the shotgun version. Honestly, the farm is a bit of a pain. I would recommend you pick it up from battle. Every time battle comes, I do a quick update on him, so subscribe for that one. And the last one is gonna be Fermite Rounds again from Spy Mission, so what we got on the weapon is corrosive heat and a whole lot of puncture. This is a good setup to have against heavily armored targets, so let's check out what non-crit and non-viral can do in 2023. I'm gonna be spawning in Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120 and Exogox that Officer 120. Now, for the record, the Boltor Prime is Mastery Rank 13. I think I'm overdoing it with the levels, but you know what, let's just leave it like this to see how the weapon legitimately performs. These are the Corrupted Heavy Goons. Corrupted Heavy Goons with a whole lot of ferrite armor, but not a problem for me because I got corrosive and heat and I'm gonna be able to melt these targets like so. And again, go for headshots. Take a look at that, beautiful. Now if the kill shot with a bolt weapon, yes, with a bolt weapon is on the head, then it's gonna send them flying and spike them to a wall if it has a wall behind it to spike. Let me see if I can, nah, uh, nah, from the back. From the back, you don't really get headshots because they have this like big thing, you know, to protect their noggin and all whatnot. But you see that? Sends them freaking flying, absolutely beautiful. So here you go, my friends, a basic setup, a non- Viral slash build that can absolutely wreck even higher level targets such as these corrupted heavy goons level 120 Now these guys <laughs> These guys are a lot tougher. They have they're essentially corrupted heavy goons, but a whole lot more EHP Okay, they got more HP and more armor But even these guys will eventually fall to the might of the Baltor Prime like so Take a look at this. How's that? How's that? You can go for a crit approach on this one if you want to. I don't believe that this is where the weapon shines. It's not meant for that. And you know what? If you want crit and viral from Mumu, there are so many other better weapons for that. Use the Boltor as a rough hammer, if you will. And again, on targets like these, I mean, even a basic setup can absolutely melt them like so. Now let's say that you fantastic gentlemen have more than what a basic setup entails. Yes, you got prime mods, you got galvanized mods, essentially the works. Maybe you can even afford a Riven. Well, let's think about it for a second, right? Obviously galvanized chamber is a no-brainer and galvanized aptitude. This one helps the weapon a whole lot. Essentially, the more status is on your weapon, the more damage aptitude is gonna be dealing, which is, again, fantastic. We got the same 90 mods as, as before. We also have Fermi round. So on the weapon, we still got Corrosive Heat, Puncture Impact. Those are four elemental types for Galvanized Aptitude to give giving us damage. You can have more than that because we can talk now about Riven mods. Four out of five, right? Well, when it comes to Riven mods, I want to use this as a teachable moment. Most players go gaga when they see multi-shot critical chance critical damage. This is an old meta, it should not be respected for every weapon in the game. For example, not in the case of the Boltor Prime. Look at this one. Multi-shot critical chance critical damage. The multi-shot is priority number one on the Boltor, no questions about it. But if you want a Riven for the Boltor Prime, outside of that multi-shot, you can look at something like damage or status chance, or you can look at something like another element that will help galvanize aptitude and you can replace serration with such a riven mod especially with four out of five so don't blindly go for critical chance and critical damage on everything a riven mod for the boltor like this one will work fantastically on the telos boltor if you don't know that's the brother of the boltor prime that's the critical boltor this is the status boltor and if you want a full detail guide on that one look at the cards right now again if you prefer this style of weapon but you want it to crit you want it to slash then that's the one to go for. Other options include a Bane mod. Yes, we need to talk about Bane mod because it's a separate multiplier and it's definitely worth using if you're going for the max amount of damage. In my case, I can easily replace Serration with the prime Bane of the whatever I'm shooting. Normally, I don't really go for Bane mods because they're a terrible design idea, but if you're fighting something like the Corrupted, not a bad idea. The Grenier, again, not a bad idea. For the Corpus and the Infested, I don't normally bother because they don't have fantastic defenses. 
In our case, it would not be very smart to go for Bane of the Corrupted, because although the Corrupted Heavy Goons are corrupted, the Exogogs that are Grenier, so I would need midway to change the Bane mod, which again works into the whole, these are not designed very well, and they're a little bit fussy when it comes to usability and endo cost and blah blah. Not important. What is important? Primary Deadhead. Since we are using a rough damage approach, we finally get to use this one, and this one on Precision Headshot Kill, so you need an impact kill, not a damage over time kill. 120% damage for 24 seconds, stacks up 3 times, minus weapon recall, and plus 30% headshot multi, because this one didn't get nerfed like Merciless got nerfed. So there you go my friends, here you go, a standard build just like you fantastic people asked for, hey laser stop showing us ribbons, because not everybody has ribbon, you got it friend, you got it, there we go, corrupted heavy goons and exogog, mods, more expensive mods that a veteran has, and you don't need to go out of your way to get a ribbon. This being a galvanized setup, in order for me to get its full power, I'm gonna need to get a couple of kills. I'm gonna need to get a couple of kills for that damage, but you can already see the weapon start chomping its targets, look. Boom, 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 and there it goes, baby. And there it goes, and I'm keep stacking. Look at that. Beautiful, no ribbon, absolutely fantastic. I love playing with this weapon. It's an old school weapon, it's an old school fantastic weapon, and it can still get the job done. But it really depends what kind of job you're talking about. If you guys are the type of players that enjoy staying long in missions and you want to uh, fight the enemies in the thousands, this is not that type of a weapon to go for. But if you still want the raw damage approach and against levels in the thousands, I got something fantastic for you in the cards right now. If cards don't show up for you guys, make sure you have annotations turned on and you're using Chrome, okay? So as you can see, again, the weapon can perform quite nicely. But I know what you're saying, dude. Standing still targets in the simulacrum, hardly sportsmanlike, don't you think? And yeah, you do have a point. So we're gonna head on to the path, Steve. Welcome to the Void, my friends. Now let's see what the Voltor Prime can do against the Steel Path Corrupted, level 130-ish. And as you can see, it will have no problem dispatching its enemies with great haste. Honestly, for normal level steel path, which is what exactly what we're doing now, you're not really gonna need anything more than this. Make sure to take out the little sentinel drone thing and then take out the targets. Of course, the corpus are gonna fold really easily, but then on the other hand, everything is gonna be folding really easily. I have Big Mama Hildren with me, because I assume when you're going steel path, you're gonna be using your Warframe's ability as well, and we also have the Panzer Volpophila, which will be adding vital procs to our targets. And as you can see, it's no problem whatsoever and absolutely annihilating whatever stands before you. So if you want a clear steel path with just the Boltor Prime because you're that stylish of an individual, then 100% you're gonna have no problem whatsoever. I mean, take a look at the damage. Take a look at that beautiful, beautiful damage. The vital always helps because we got now another element to proc off our uh, galvanized aptitude on, which is again pretty good. This is the damage you can expect, and this is the performance you can expect out of the weapon. And yes, I know there are more powerful weapons that you can use for Steel Path, but honestly, you don't really need more than this. But perhaps you're the type of individual that are not satisfied with just this alone. Perhaps you need a bit more Warframe buffs, and for that, well, I got the most specialist of Warframes. Mirage Prime and her absolutely outstanding assets. Now when it comes to Mirage, she is the most powerful weapon buffer frame in the game, but she does have certain issues like survivability, for example, and the fact that her Eclipse buff, powerful as it may be, is not exactly the most reliable thing in Warframe. We have been asking the developer for actual years to give us more control over Eclipse and nada, nothing my friends, nada, nothing, zit. Corrosive projection is a fantastic idea against heavily armored targets, but it's not a must-have. If your build calls for melee guidance, pistol amp, well, I don't know, brief respite, combat discipline, or whatever else, it doesn't really matter, simply go for the aura of your choosing. If the aura is that relevant to you, please don't forget about co-action drift. Now Arcanes, Arcanes are a lot more impactful. Arcane Avenger in our case is not really ideal unless we mod the weapon for critical damage. So the way you can get critical on the Boltor Prime is by using outside buffs. Arcane Avenger is one good example, the Kavad buff another good example, and another good example would be Harrow's buff. Yes, Harrow, absolutely fantastic, 200% on headshot, 50% on body shot, fully stacked out. So what we can do, if we decide to go for Arcane Avenger, we gotta mod the weapon for critical damage. Yes, because critical chance without critical damage, 
doesn't really go together and vice versa. As for your second arcane, honestly, this should be left to your Warframe, something like your Energize, but if you want even more flat damage than this, even though you got plenty, you can go with something like Arcane Rage. And you know what? More is better, even though that when you add more of the same multiplier, you're gonna be getting yourself less of a benefit, so bear that one in mind. Critical damage, oh well, we did say we have a whole lot of flat damage, yes, we got plenty of flat damage in our case, so we can unmod Serration, and go in our case for something like hammer shot critical damage and 80 percent status chance this will work towards the weapon's advantage fantastic but at the end of the day in this case in particular going for 120 percent critical damage is gonna be the way to go or a multi-shot critical chance critical damage ribbon isn't this gonna be more powerful yes but i promised you guys i will show you without a ribbon so there you go no ribbon just normal average everyday mods and of course as before the panzer volpophila if you want more crit however you can go with carrier or any other sentinel you want just make sure that on that sentinel's weapon you have the four vigilante mods to get you that 20 percent chance to enhance critical hits now, we're going to be spawning in the Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 165. Yes, I would spawn in the thousands if I could, but the developer does not allow me to. We're going to unpause the AI so they can hit me and I can get my glorious, absolutely glorious buffs. And don't worry about the little sentinel. Even if it dies and never comes back to life, you'll still retain said buff. Didn't I say I was going to use the Vulpa Phyla? Eh, it's fine either way. Eclipse, 840%. And one more time for the best animation in Warfare. Beautiful. Go for headshots. Without stacks, that was without stacks. How's that? How's that for a Tommy Gun impersonation, my friends in Warframe? How is that? Thank you so much, Mirage Prime, for absolutely annihilating whatever stands before her. I do believe you can get a... Can I... Uh, stamp over. I, I want to get a headshot. Stamp, yeah, yeah. There you go, 180,000 out of a single shot from the Boltor, which from my point of view is more than respectable. This is the kind of damage you can get if you know what Warframe buffs to use. And yes, this is mostly Mirage Prime, but also the Boltor can pack... Oh, look at that. That was a single shot. That was a one shot on, what was that, 165 Exogog. You can't tell me that is not good. So, my friends, it's time to draw some conclusions. The Boltor Prime, like so many other fantastic weapons in Warframe, is kind of left by the roadside, forgotten, simply because there are other weapons you can use, but that doesn't mean that this glorious, absolutely glorious weapon cannot pack a punch and it can serve you well while giving you a little bit of extra style to boot. As always, my name is Malazar, thank you guys so much for watching, like, favorite, share and subscribe only if you enjoy the content, if you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you guys want to suggest any particular weapon build. Like for example, hey, I want to see this weapon build or that weapon build and so on and so forth. I got a list, a priority list and most of it is made up by your suggestions legitimately. I just plus one this, plus one that and so on and so forth. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, Discord, link in the description down below. But if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. There's going to be a link in the upper portion, upper right portion of the screen right about now. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye. And enjoy the Boltor Prime.